family. We hate that we're not able to be in person today, but we're also very grateful that we have the technology to be able to worship online. So if you will join me and let's start worshiping our Lord this morning. We stand and lift up our hands For the joy of the Lord is our strength We bow down and worship Him now How great, how awesome is He And together we sing Oh, holy is the Lord
Father, I pray right now, God, that we would be available to you, God. That we would be available to the holiest of holies, God. That you, you would be accessible to us, God. That we would allow ourselves to be accessible to you, God, in a way that you can use us, God. God, that today, Lord, we would answer your call, God. Right now in the homes of every person watching this, God, that, that they would answer the call, that they would make themselves available to you, God. Because we know that you're available to us and that you want to use us in a mighty and a powerful way. But sometimes distractions get in the way, God. And so, Lord, I pray right now that you would remove every distraction that's going to hinder us from hearing from you, God. God, I know that there's many sicknesses and uh, different things plaguing our nation and plaguing our families, God. And I just ask, Lord, right now, Father, that you just remove those things, God. God, where there's, there, there's healing that is needed, God, that you would begin the healing process, God. God, where there's provisions that are needed, God, that you would do that, God. Where there needs to be a miracle, God, that you would provide that miracle, Lord, right now. God, be with us for the remainder of this time, God. May every word that is spoken, God, may every note that was played, every song, God, every word that was sung, God, may it be uplifting to you, God. Speak to us right now. Right now in this moment, speak to us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Again, I just want to say welcome. Uh, welcome to Holly Hill Church Online. <clears throat> it's uh, very unfortunate that we're not able to be together right now, um, but I am thankful for technology and the ability to be able to join together online, even when we can't in person. Um, and I just want to ask that you be in prayer for our community, uh, for many in our family and our area uh, who, who are dealing with COVID right now. Um, COVID seems to be coming back full force. And so let's just be in prayer and let's just trust God to, to move in a mighty and a powerful way. We do have a lot of people on our prayer list. I'm not going to go through all of them today, um, but do be praying for our friends and our family, praying for your neighbors, your loved ones, <clears throat> and uh, praying for those in our community. The local churches, as uh, again, COVID is rising um, quite a bit. We're seeing a lot of cases in our area. Again, I just want to say welcome though. Uh, if you are joining us for the first time, please text the word welcome to 252-888-4134. Again, text the word welcome to 252-888-4134. Or you can go to hollyhillphc.org slash welcome. Uh, you can also download our app. Um, I, I definitely encourage you to do so. Uh, go to hollyhillphc.org slash app and you can download our app there. Um, if you do not currently receive updates from us, you can text the word update to 252-888-4134 and uh, be sure to check out our app, our social media, our website, check out all of those areas uh, so you can stay up to date with everything that is going on <clears throat> through our church. Um, I also want to remind you, uh, typically we have a ton of announcements, uh, but I don't have any for you today. Uh, just be safe and, and understand that there will be no ministries on campus um, this entire week. We're taking this week off um, uh, just to ensure the safety and well-being of, of all of our members and all of our family um, due to COVID. So uh, just a reminder, that means there won't be any student ministries tonight, no prayer on Wednesday morning, no kids or Bible study um, Wednesday night, no women's ministry this week. And we'll see you again um, hopefully and prayerfully in person uh, next week on Sunday for worship. Um, I do want to remind you of the ways that you can give as well. <clears throat> you can give online right now by simply going to hollyopac.org slash give, and it'll also show you all the ways that you can give there. Um, you can give in person anytime during any of our um, in-person worship services. You can mail your gift, your tithe, your offering to uh, P.O. Box. 636 and that's here in Vanceboro or right now if you have your mobile phone and, and you would like to you can text the word give to 855-576-2259 and that'll walk you through just a couple of steps to uh, uh, help you be set up to give and then you can just simply give right there by texting or you can give on our app and again you can download our app at hollyhillphc.org 
slash app. I just want to thank you again for, uh, for your generosity, uh, for your tithing, for your offering, for giving above and, and, and over and beyond what, what is asked of you. Um, and for your continued contributions to missions and to the building fund. I just thank you. I can't thank you enough for that. <clears throat> um, so I had a, a, another sermon in mind. Um, it's actually a sermon series that I had planned on starting uh, today. But um, it was one that, that I felt like God had given me to uh, kind of coincide with our VBS and, and, and what we were going to be doing um, for VBS. Uh, but man, it just wasn't coming together. It's like the messages, they, they just weren't. I don't know, they just weren't clicking. Um, I don't know if you ever had that where something just was not clicking. And that was the case for me um, with with that sermon series that, that I was planning. And um, it just, again, it wasn't coming together like I had hoped. And then, of course, COVID decides to creep back in. And um, now we've had to postpone our VBS. And, and we had to move this worship service to online only. <clears throat> and... Uh, you know, we were, my family and I, we were trying to sneak in a, a last minute uh, family vacation before Hannah goes back to work this week. Uh, we hadn't had a chance. We've been traveling so much uh, with ministry and, and different things and hadn't had a chance to do a family vacation. And so we did a little two day mini vacation. We just got a place in Jacksonville and uh, drove back and forth uh, to Emerald Isle. And I wanted to be close by that way, if something was needed at the church, I, I could I could be there uh, for any need that that may arise. But again, the the, the sermon series and the messages, um, I had ideas and scripture, but they just weren't clicking. But then Friday night, I was sitting in the hotel room, <clears throat> and all of a sudden, I kept just kind of hearing in my spirit this this word remnant, remnant. It just the word remnant just kept kind of coming back to me and I, I just I couldn't escape it um I couldn't get away from the word and you know that that word remnant is is found several times throughout scripture and, and I, I believe that the reason I kept hearing that kind of in my spirit and, and just kind of uh, I even dreamt about it um I think it's because God wants us I think God wants us to look at what it means to be his remnant to be the remnant and if I'm being honest, if I'm being frank with you, right now, more than ever, we are seeing a crazy shift in our land. We're seeing a crazy shift in the U.S. I'm talking a shift in beliefs, a shift in, in the, the view, the worldview of Christianity, uh, even a shift in what it means <clears throat> to be a Christian. Uh, we're seeing a shift in the church and what church looks like. Now more than ever before, now more than any time in history, I believe we need a remnant. We need a remnant that will stand firm while everything around us begins to shift. While everything around us begins to fall apart, we need a remnant. And so the question that I want to ask you today, and hopefully I will be able to help us all answer this before this sermon series is over, and maybe even before today is over, the question I have for you, and this is even the title of the message today is, Are You Remnant? Are You Remnant? Let's pray. Father, I ask, Lord, that you would bless this word, God that you would use this word, that you would use this time, God, to help raise a remnant, God. Lord, may, may your voice be the voice that is heard, God, your word that is heard, God. May it be you, not me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. So my vision uh, that, that I have for this sermon series is that it'll be one that, that kind of helps us to make one of the most intimate encounters with God that, that we've ever experienced. Um, and I pray that through this series that you will realize what your true potential is, that you will step into your calling, that you will make yourself available as that song said that we sang just a few moments ago, that, that you will answer the call, that you will discover what your purpose and your design is. I pray that, that you will honestly step into what God has created you to be, that you will find your poten potential, 
And your potential is not found in, in what man says about you or what man uh, or man's approval, but it's found in God. It's found when, when God directly connects with our hearts, when God directly connects with us. And so he, here's my concern that I have, though, and it's the same concern that is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 34. We need to awaken we need to awaken to righteousness and do not sin. For some do not have the knowledge of God. I speak this to you, to your shame. This is why part of our, our mission for our church is to awaken the faithful. You know, at Holly Hill, we, we want to be a spirit-filled church that reaches the lost, that loves the least, that awakens the faithful, and that makes the church matter. But my concern is, my heart is that some of us who go to church regularly, some of us who attend church regularly, some of us who have been going to church all of our lives, we don't truly know God or know who God really is. And this is a part of the vision for our church. Yeah, Holly Hill, we, we want to be a, a church where, where you get to know God personally, where you can experience real, true freedom where you can discover your specific purpose, your design, and then you can impact your community and your world. Some of us, though, however, are going through the motions. We're just simply going through the motions. We're, As I said before, we're, we're just checking off that box saying, I went to church. I fulfilled my responsibility. I, I got that, that daily scripture in my email. I, and we're just, we're just checking the box. Some of us... Some of us, though, we're doing what we've seen others do. Some of us, we're just simply mimicking what others have done. Some of us, we're simply doing what we have always done. Some of us, we're imitating the worship of others. Um, and then some of us, we don't, we don't worship at all. Some of us, we, we imitate a prayer or a prayer life of someone else. Some of us do not truly no God. I said this at uh, Falcon Youth Night the other night. And the, the gnosko, like truly having a real, authentic, genuine relationship. Some of us don't know God. Gnosko, don't truly know God beyond just knowledge of, of knowing of him, but know him personally. Some of us have not had a true encounter with God where when we were done with that encounter, we felt like we had no clue who we were. We, see, the thing is, we've become so infatuated with, with what others, what other people think about us. that honestly, we, we've lost sight of who, who we, we think we are, who, who we, we really are, who God thinks we are, and who God even calls us to be. He, he, we're his masterpiece. God calls us his masterpiece. See, the thing is, we, we need to forget about what everybody is saying. We need to forget the labels. We need to forget about those around us and the things around us. And we need to truly just grab hold of God. And when we grab hold of God, we need to not let go. We need to stand firm in our faith without wavering. Some of us, some of us have reached a point of desperation. Some of us, have, we've tried it on our own and we failed. Some of us have, have messed up time and time and time again. And so we've reached this point of desperation where we feel as though there is nothing left. And then some of us honestly need to reach that point of desperation. You see, God, God reaches out. God always reaches out to people when they reach a point of desperation. I'm not saying you have to reach a point of desperation for God to reach out to you, but he does. When we're at the end of our rope, when we're at the end, he, he, he reminds us, I'm, I'm still here. We need to be desperate for God. We need to be desperate for battle. We need to be ready to fight. Listen, here's the thing that a lot of people don't understand. <clears throat> 
God isn't looking for the biggest. He's not looking for the best. He's not looking for the most gifted or the most talented. He's not even looking for the most educated. Look at me. I'm not the most educated person. He is an after the most religious person. God is after a willing vessel. He's after those who are willing. He's after those who will remain true to his word. Those who will stay in this book. Those who will remain true to his word. Those who will remain steadfast in his love. And those who will answer the call. <coughs> we have to be willing to answer the call to be remnant. We have to reach the point where we're sick of entertaining others that we seek and we find power in the gospel, power in the Holy Spirit, power in a true, authentic, real, gnosko relationship where we know God. And so I ask you again, are you remnant? <clears throat> remnant according to Deuteronomy 3.11 and then also 28.54 it's referred to as what is left over. In other scriptures, it's refer referred to as the remainder or a as a residue. And then in Romans 11, 5, it speaks of a remnant. While, while Israel was in despair and, and in horrible conditions, there was a remnant that was left. There was a, rem a remnant that remained faithful. And this is the case for us. We are all a part of a remnant. If we would just look around right now, just look on social media today, look around in your community. We see people abandoning the cross and everything that it stands for. We see people twisting scripture to fit what they want, to make it say what they want it to say, to make it not say what, what it really says so that then they feel okay. We see people stepping away every day from faith. We see pastors in the news and leaders in the news all the time <clears throat> who are failing morally. We can't become dormant because of the falling world and the failing people around us. But instead, we have to remain active and remain faithful. We also can't become discouraged by the world around us and the people around us. But instead, we have to be encouraged by the fact that God is going to bless his remnant. Think of it like this. The remnant is, is, is like a residue. And, and the longer that, that the residue stays around, it'll leave a mark. I, think about a coffee cup. I'll never forget one of the guys I used to work with. He used the same coffee cup every single day. You could tell where he poured and filled his coffee up to because there was a ring right there. He had used it so much and over time there was a little bit of residue that left. So much so that it finally left its mark. We have to leave our mark on this world, on the people in our neighborhoods, in our community. We have to leave our mark in these last days. It is time for the remnant to usher in the end time revival and the greatest harvest that I believe the world has ever and will ever see. Are you remnant and are you ready? I want to close with, with a, a parable that speaks, I believe, to the remnant and to the church as it stands right now. And it, it comes from Matthew chapter 2, excuse me, Matthew chapter 22, beginning in verse 2. Let me just read it for you here. The kingdom of heaven can be illustrated by the story of a king who prepared a great wedding feast for his son. When the banquet was ready, he sent his servants to notify those who were invited, but they all refused to come. So he sent other servants to tell them, the feast has been prepared. The bulls and the fattened cattle have been killed and everything is ready. Come to the banquet. But once again, the guests he had invited, they ignored them and went their own way. One to his farm, another to his business. Others, they seized his messengers and insulted them and even killed them. The king was furious and he sent out his army to destroy the murderers and burn their town. 
And he said to his servants, the wedding feast is ready. And the guests I invited aren't worthy of the honor. Now go out to the street corners and invite everyone you see. So the servants brought in everyone they could find, good and bad alike, and the banquet hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to meet the guests, he noticed a man who wasn't wearing the proper clothes for a wedding. Friend, he asked, how is it that you are here without wedding clothes? But the man had no reply. Then the king said to his aides, bind his hands and feet and throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. Sadly, this represents many churches today. The invitation is going out. The wedding feast is ready, but people every single day, <clears throat> they're refusing the invitation. They're refusing the cross. They're refusing the Savior. They're refusing this word, this invitation. <clears throat> every single day, many are called. But few are chosen. I'm telling you right now, church, don't refuse it. Are you remnant? Will you stay when everyone else leaves? COVID, no doubt, has done a number on the church. Many churches have shrunk in size. Many people have never returned to the church. And thankfully, like today, when we can't meet in person, we have the internet, we have technology, but many are leaving the church now more than ever. And I want to ask you, will you stay? Society, government, schools, businesses, the media, they are all shifting. And I want to ask you, will you remain faithful? Are you remnant? The remnant is what is left. When everything else fades and everyone walks away, I ask you again today, are you remnant? Will you accept the invitation that the master has given you? In fact, right now, where you're at, I want you just to bow your head and I want you to close your eyes. I'm giving you an invitation into the kingdom, which gives us an invitation into the great wedding banquet, the wedding feast. Will you accept it today? Will you accept Jesus today? Will you accept that invitation that he has given us? That the, the blood that was shed by Jesus, the life that was given and the fact that he rose, it was all for us so that we can accept the invitation into heaven. So right now, if that's you, just a moment or right now, I want you just to put in the comments, that's me. Send me a message, that's me. When we're done, I'll tell you how you can let us know that, that you prayed this prayer. But right now, if I'm talking with you, I want you just to close your eyes right where you're at. I don't want to get you in trouble if you're at work or driving or anything like that. Or maybe you're watching this later, but right now, if you're saying, I want to accept that invitation and I want Jesus to be my Lord and Savior, I, I, I want that forgiveness and that salvation. Right now, close, close your eyes and bow your head and let's pray this together. Dear Heavenly Father, I'm so grateful for your son, Jesus Christ, who died for my sake while I was still dead in my sin. But today... I am raised to life just as Christ was. And I thank you for your forgiveness. I thank you for salvation. And I promise that from this day forward, God, I will serve you. Today, I accept my invitation to forgiveness, to salvation, and to the kingdom. Help me, Lord. Holy Spirit, lead me and guide me all the days of my life because my life no longer belongs to me, but it belongs to you.